So have you tried semi-hydro and maybe are struggling a bit to get your plants happy? Or are you somebody wanting to try semi-hydro and maybe don't want to make the mistakes that all the rest of us has made at the beginning of the journey? Stick around and let's dive into it. Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel, Houseplant Tea Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So for a lot of you that maybe have seen my first two videos on kind of semi-hydro and more specifically the Lechuza Pond of it all, basically, this is the follow-up video at least a couple of years later after I've started using Pond or kind of a semi-hydro mix for a lot of my houseplants. In this video, what I want to do is dive into some of the things that I have personally learned over the years in terms of do's and don'ts. Again, these are all my experiences growing my plants in my space. If your experiences differ and your conditions are probably going to be different than mine, do let us all know in the comments down below. This is more of a kind of, let's start a conversation going, because I know that a lot of people might struggle when they're first trying something like pond or even just semi-hydro and thinking of things like, um, not to choose a pond, lecker, the little clay pebbles. Or people might be a bit worried about getting into it because they hear a lot of the rest of us who have tried it kind of going, ah, it's still a bit of a trial and error situation. So. I thought, you know what, let's not gatekeep what I've learned at least, and let me share it with all of you. But before we go any further, let's look at the different media, at least the ones that I'm aware of, the two major ones that most people that deal with houseplants have probably heard of or are more than likely to hear of. So one being something called Lechuza Pon, this isn't, this is slightly different, but I'll talk about that in a moment. But Lechuza Pon, so Pon is technically a product name, and Lechuza is the brand. So a lot of people came to the awareness of this material through the company called Lechuza and through their product called Pon. Now, with them, the way that the product is set up is that there is lava rock, pumice, zeolite, and usually slow release fertilizers, so the little pebbles of slow release fertilizer. And with the choose upon, it really only comes in the one size, the size of kind of the material. And I bring it up so you can kind of have a look roughly what it looks like in a clear container. You can kind of see it just looks a bit like gravel basically. The other major material that people might use to grow semi hydroponically is something called lecker. So if I'm not mistaken, LECA stands for Light Expanded Clay Aggregate. So these little balls, essentially, and I'll bring it in whilst my hand shaking. Hopefully that will focus if I take my face out of it. These are little balls of clay, essentially. Now, both of these things have got different strengths and weaknesses from what I can glean by using both of them, because I've now officially used both of them. I was a bit hesitant on the LECA, it's still not 100% sold, but I'm getting there. But yeah, I alluded a moment ago to the fact that this is not Lechuza Pond. This is actually a larger media than the Lechuza Pond that a company that's based here in the UK, I'm pretty sure they now ship to Europe as well, I don't know about America or the rest of the world, called Soil Ninja. And Soil Ninja have done two different sizes of what they call their semi-hydro mix. One which is fine, which is much smaller pebbles, and one which is coarse, which is this one, which is bigger. So having experienced Lechuza Pond, the Soil Ninja Fine, and the Soil Ninja Coarse, the way that it kind of sits is, I think the smallest one in size, from what I can see, from my own perspective at least, is the Soil Ninja Fine. Then in the middle, kind of slightly larger than the fine from semi, the fine semi hydro mix from Soil Ninja. These are a lot of tongue twisters going on today. 
sits the lechuzapon, so it's kind of slightly larger. And then the largest of all, at least that you can kind of buy here, is the coarse mix from the guys at Soil Ninja. See, I had to think, I'm just like, it's not Lechuza, it is Soil Ninja. Also, another thing to say about the one from the people at Soil Ninja, at least the coarse one that I use all the time, it also looks like it's got some leka in it. So that's something to bear in mind. And as far as I'm aware, this doesn't come as standard with the slow release fertilizer. Now, as I've touched on the slow release fertilizer pebbles, this is an interesting one because the Choose Upon, if I'm not mistaken, do an orchid version of their mix, basically. And I think that one has got some bark in it and it doesn't have the slow release fertilizer, mainly because orchids don't need fertilizer all the time within their growing media. Interestingly enough, with the people from Soil Ninja, because it doesn't have those kind of slow release pebbles in it, you could potentially make your own orchid mix to choose upon by just adding in some orchid bark. Let's move on to how you would transition things into your semi-hydro mix. So the edict for both, I'll call it pon for ease because that's what most people recognize. So putting a plant that might you might buy from a shop or a seller that might already be in an aroid soil mix into something like pon or into something like leka. Generally the edict is you need to rinse all of the soil off the roots or as much as you can possibly get off the roots. Now and this is where the first tip comes in that I have kind of realized. A, that can be quite challenging. And by challenging, I mean, if you're getting something with super fine roots, getting all the soil off them usually means you'll probably lose about 80 to 90%, if not all of the roots. So less than ideal because you'd be starting from a plant that had roots before into something that doesn't have any. And if a plant has got very fine roots, generally it doesn't, in my experience at least, it doesn't propagate quite as easily. So I'll bring up a really, Unfortunately, busted looking example, this is more to do with the care that I've given it rather than the fact that it's in semi-hydro. So this is interesting and this was actually from one of the suggestions from all of you lovely people out there. Who, when I was saying that in previous video that you know what I would never try something like ferns because it's got very fine roots. Somebody said you know what if you don't take the soil off and you put removing whatever fern you might have got with the soil around all the roots and then putting it in a container that has got the pond at the bottom and then filling all the way around and then providing it with a reservoir, it would work. As I said, ignore the fact that it's looking a bit janky and a bit brown and a bit crispy and it really does. That's the care that I've given it because this isn't a plant that I ever specifically wanted. I got it small for the reason of experimenting. The experiment worked. I've been meaning to do this video for the last year, more or less, and I've kept it going there for a while just so I can show it. Unfortunately, it's a bit crispy now, and it's just because it's not getting the best conditions. But one thing I will say is this plant was about half the size before it went into the Lechuza Pond with the reservoir, and it's been super happy. So first tip is that you can put something like a fern into Lechuza Pond. I don't know if it would necessarily work with Leka. Leka is too big and it creates too many air spaces within the soil media or within the, the growing media. It's not soil, technically. So it probably wouldn't work with the super, super fine roots. However, this did work. A charm so you can do it. I can also say now that I have put some rhizometers begonias which have also got very very fine roots in Lechuza pond and that worked a charm as well. Now when it comes to the begonia I'm going to be fully transparent and say that I didn't move it in with the soil media. What I was doing is I had a rhizometers begonia, I had propagated it in water so those roots were already used to kind of a water media then I moved it into Lechuza Pond and actually if I was to do it again I would probably move it into something even smaller, so something like the Soil Ninja Fine Mix. And it did really well. It took a while, I'm not going to lie. 
You're not going to see huge results really quickly, but it did okay, and it's growing happily. And I'll see if I can add a picture or a video here as well. It's looking a bit busted because it's still quite young, but it has rooted into the media beautifully. It has got a reservoir at the moment, and it is growing new leaves. Coming on to another big tip that I've experienced, and this again works both with Le Chuse Pon and with the Lekka. You might have been able to see on this pot for the eagle eyed amongst you, can you see the holes? Let me also bring out an empty pot so you might be able to see the holes even better. So with a lot of these pots, I will, and it's probably not the safest or, it's probably, yeah, it's probably not the safest thing to do, but I do it outside. So at least if there's any fumes, I'm not breathing them in entirely or leaving them in the house. I get a little soldering iron and I burn some holes into the pots. Pot is the other thing that you might notice here. You don't have to, but I would suggest something clear. Because especially if you're starting this off kind of for the first time, or even if you've struggled with this for a while, clear pots will go a long way to kind of letting you see what's happening inside with the roots if you're getting any rot. That is the beauty of something like a clear pot and something like a semi-hydro mix. If there is any root rot that is happening, you can see that a lot faster and deal with it a lot faster. Usually, not always, but usually before you even start seeing problems with your plants. So that is a good thing. But yeah, this holes and pots. It lets more air through and it's a bit more forgiving, especially when you've got something like a reservoir, especially if you're gonna sit this into a container that has water, at least there's other bits, at least that's how I see it, where there is airflow coming into the actual pot and the media, rather than it just coming in from the bottom, basically. These are just kind of clear orchid pots. That's why you've got that little dome in the middle. I don't know what purpose that serves with orchids. If somebody knows, do let us know. But you don't have to buy these. You can just use what I've been using for a lot of my kind of propagations or smaller plants. You can get clear kind of picnic cups or the kind of stuff that's technically meant to be disposable. The good thing is you're gonna be using it a lot because they're gonna be your new pots. But yeah, this has been a bit of a game changer. Having the holes in the clear pots is huge. If you don't want to be looking at this all the time, and actually arguably I find, <laughs> again, personal opinion, I find looking at the kind of pebbles a bit more interesting than looking at the soil. However, I will say something, and again, I'll see if I can kind of add a picture here, because trying to lift some of these plants that are sapping wet in reservoirs at the moment is quite tricky. But if you've got a clear pot and it's getting a decent level of light and you're adding things like fertilizers in, especially if they're of the organic type or if they've got microfauna that is meant for both semi-hydro or kind of soil mixes, most people know by this point that what I use for a lot of these, or actually all of these, is um, fertilizer called liquid gold leaf. And I've usually got it linked down below. This isn't sponsored. I'm very, I don't think I've ever been sponsored, so. <laughs> But uh, yeah, with that, you will get potentially some algae growing. So what you can do if you've got a pot or even if you've got those clear plastic cups, put it into a cash poke. A lot of the times it doesn't necessarily mean you're never going to get algae, but in my experiences, if it's in a cash poke and it means it's not getting any light, there's less algae that forms, if at all, basically. So there is that to be said, but you then don't get to see the roots all the time and all of these things. So it is a personal choice and I will let each and every one of you who wants to try this, choose what you prefer. Now, some updates on the plants. And this is the other big tip that I don't think I've mentioned on previous videos. I might have done recently on one of my videos. But, because I know a lot of people wanted to try something like the Choose Upon because they see me, they see other people that have maybe got bigger plants. For me, and I can't talk about everybody else's experience, for me, part of the reason that I moved a lot of my plants into a semi-hydro mix is, barring the obvious, it's easier to spot root rot, it's, it's harder, not impossible, to get root rot or over water, there's a whole host of issues there, basically. But 
It is predominantly because it makes my watering life easier, especially here in the summer, because I can fill reservoirs and not have to worry about watering the plants quite as frequently in something like a conservatory when it's bright, bright and sunny, where when I had things in soil mixes, they were needing watering twice a day in here. So hmm, the Lechuza pond or the semi-hydro, even if it's Lecca as well, you kind of avoid having to do that. But the big thing for me, and I don't think people realize this, for me at least, and based on my experiences so far with my plants, is it keeps the plants smaller, which I know is not necessarily something that everybody wants. I don't have a lot of space. <laughs> you can see I've got some large specimens. I've got like plants everywhere. I dread to count how many plants I've got at this point. But I need things to slow down and it might sound counterintuitive because a lot of people get a plant and they want it to get as big as quickly as possible. In my experience, and I'm going to be completely blunt with this, if you want that, again, based on my experiences, it might be different from you, if I wanted to do that with a plant, I would actually by default put it in an aroid soil mix. I find that all of my plants that are in aroid soil mixes tend to grow bigger, faster, all of the above basically. So there is that to be said, but I chose this media because I didn't want that. I want to be able to control the growth of my plants a lot. So it helps me, but as I said, it might not be for everybody. So let's talk about what I at least have found works really well in semi-hydro media. A lot of people would just be like, most plants will do well in semi-hydro. Mm, yes, you can, like, I, I kind of gave you the example a moment ago of something like a begonia or something like a fern that you might think wouldn't work. They can work, you can get it to work. If you want to go down that route exclusively, you can. Also, slight side note here, because I know a lot of people go for the semi-hydro, because they don't want soil everywhere. <laughs> At least when they're first starting. So if you are first starting and that is the reason why you don't want that, adjust your expectations because you won't get soil everywhere. But trust me and everybody else who has got semi-hydro media, knocking over like anything within Lekka or anything within Lechuza Pond and getting gravel or clay pebbles everywhere isn't necessarily better. Just gonna say that, just, just putting it out there. So if that's the main reason why you're doing it, I'm really sorry to burst the bubble. But yeah, coming back onto what I was saying in terms of plants that work really well, and I'm not gonna say that every plant, everything does okay in it. Yes, it can do okay in it, but there are some plants that I have found do exceptionally well. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is Lekka. So within Lekka, one of the things that does exceptionally well, and again, for the people that have done this before, this might not come as a surprise, alocasias. Alocasias, I would imagine collocasias as well, and probably caladiums. I have not tried it with collocasias or caladiums, but considering that they all grow in very similar manners, I would imagine those, like the collocasias and the caladiums would do well as well. But alocasias, in my experience, do really well, especially I've had struggling alocasias put them in Lekka specifically, and they did really well. Conversely, putting a lot of my alocasias in Pon, both large and small, didn't do quite as well. So I don't know what it is about the Lekka specifically, but it did do exceptionally well. Now coming into Pon, and that kind of semi-hydro mix, you would be surprised, actually maybe you wouldn't be surprised, the thing that works exceptionally well, almost immediately putting it into it, is anthuriums. Anthuriums have got chunky roots, generally speaking, they love this media. And also because of the way that what anthuriums want from their growing media, they want to be that kind of constantly moist, but have an awful lot of aeration. So a, a lot of people that might not grow anthuriums in semi-hydro, pretty much almost grow anthuriums in the same way that you might grow Phalaenopsis orchid. Almost entirely bark. So it gives you an idea of kind of 
why this media works so well with Anthuriums. And pretty much any Anthurium that I have put in my coarse semi-hydro mix, not the fine one, fine one works well with smaller Anthuriums that might have smaller roots. But ultimately, at some point when they get huge, you will probably be moving them to a coarse semi-hydro mix. They work really well. The caveat I will give to this is if you're starting off an Anthurium in something like this, you're probably looking at at least three to six months in my experience of just treating this as if it's soil. So no water reservoir. The moment that you start seeing some of the roots come out the bottom is the moment that you can start considering using something like a reservoir. So the other thing I would say is if you wanted to move towards a reservoir faster, start it on the smallest possible pot that you can and you will get to that stage a lot faster. If you move to a bigger pot, with much more media in it. And theoriums generally, in my experience, especially in a semi-hydro mix, take a while to grow the roots out. So well, the, the, the foliage is doing a wonderful things. And again, this is a, not a sweeping generalization because some anthuriums grow like wildfire, even in a bigger pot, and they instantly almost need a reservoir, fine. But generally speaking, you will need to have that transitional period for your anthuriums. It's not to say that you can't move things over like philodendrons that sometimes have got thinner roots, but again, it's just utilizing the sizing of the actual media as well. So if a philodendron, you've seen the roots and the roots are very, very thick, almost like an anthuriums or a monstera, which can happen, those types of philodendrons, put them in a coarse mix, potentially put them in lecker as well, they'll do fine, and they'll be living their best life. If, however, a philodendron has got very fine roots and you want to go down this route, I have found that the finer mixes, so the Soil Ninja Fine or the Lechuza Pond actually itself, because it sits in that middle ground, do really, really well. And actually, I would almost go a step to say that sometimes the Lechuza Pond is maybe a bit too big for certain philodendrons that have got kind of very, very fine roots. The other kind of little addendum that I'll add to that is that if you've got a crawling philodendron, I have tried the Mamei, I have tried the Linamei, I have tried the Gloriosum, I have tried the Plaumanii. Plaumanii is the only one that's kind of worked so far. And I have also tried the Pastazanum. Most of these did not like semi-hydronics. As I said, the Pastazanum is the only one that has done okay. The only other one that I'll say did okay is the Dean McDowell, and I've got it down below and I'll add a picture here. These two crawlers did okay. The majority of everything else didn't do great for me. I will also caveat that by saying that most of the other things that I've mentioned didn't have great roots going into it. I don't know if you propagated any of those, and this actually is a a sweeping comment that goes across the board in, in terms of semi-hydro transitioning a plant from whatever media it's been propagated in, into semi-hydro. Generally speaking, whatever you've propagated in water, as long as you get the size of the media correct, so if it's fine roots, go for a finer mix. If it's chunkier roots, go for a chunkier mix, will transition beautifully. But for the average people, they probably will be kind of going from a soil media to a semi-hydro mix. So yeah, be careful is what I would say. Obviously, and I don't know if it's obvious, but as with Anthurium, things with bigger, chunkier roots, think Monstera, a lot of Monstera have got chunkier roots, will do really well in the coarse aroid mix or potentially something like Lekka. Now I will say this really quickly before I'm sure at this point of the video has probably already been a comment down below, but you don't have to buy these pre-mixes essentially of all of these material, especially when you're looking at something like PON or PON type of media. You can just mix it yourself. You can buy the different components and mix it yourself. Most of these companies will not share with you their kind of mix on say it's 50% zeolite, 20% pumice, all of these things. They won't share it with you because obviously it's how they make their money. They are selling their proprietary blend. You would have to experiment with 
on your own and see which one works for you. Also, I know this isn't necessarily feasible for everybody wanting to try this growing media because not everybody lives in big houses with gardens and sheds and storage that they can store bags. Because if you're going to be buying zeolite, you're going to be buying big bags, sacks of it basically, sacks of all of these different things in order to mix it together and do your own mix. I'm pretty sure Soul Ninja does smaller bags of the, each one of the individual components for a, a semi-hydro mix. But yeah, it is one of those things that you can try by all means. It might be you can do your own blend, you might find that that works better, it might end up being cheaper in the long run. But yes, that, there is that option as well. You don't have to buy pre-mixed ones. I buy it because I'm inherently lazy when it comes to these things. And I used to do my own soil mixes for a long period of time, but I'm just like, <laughs> I don't have time anymore. So. The other big thing that I have learned along the way is how, to, and it sounds silly, but how to water something that's in a semi-hydro mix. A lot of people's first inclination might be, oh, this thing has now got a reservoir. It's got something with water at the bottom, so it will pull all that moisture up. That's the whole point. It works on capillary action, so it will kind of slowly kind of pull all that moisture up. In my experience, that's not always the case. Yes, it does. It does have that mechanism where it does the capillary action and it will move upwards. But let me give you an example. Say you've got this bigger pot. So smaller pot, bigger pot, or we can even look at taller pots yet than this. This might be sitting in that much water. There might be growing media up here. It's going to take a long time for the capillary action to reach all the way at the top. And the top is fully exposed to air movement, all of these things, which means that this section might dry out a lot. Or even half of this might be drying out a lot and the capillary action might not be enough to kind of get it out there. So essentially what I'm trying to say in a very long-winded way, and I do apologize, is don't just fill up the water reservoir. Water it like you would be watering a pot with a soil mix, basically. So drenching everything. Possibly you might need to move this into a bigger container or a bucket or whatever, just because it's gonna come cushing out. Obviously it's not as slow as it would be going through something like a soil mix. Or find a, a way that works for you. But that generally for me works a lot better. It also means that I don't need to water as frequently or fill up the reservoir as quick as frequently. And to be fair, I never do the just fill up the water reservoir. I will always let the water reservoir go dry. That's the other thing. You need to let the water reservoir go dry at least for a day or two, I find. Don't let it go dry for too, too long, because then you might get some of these roots drying out too, too much. Also, what you might notice, and I'll see if I can add a picture here somewhere, even plants with water reservoirs, the water reservoir might be dry, so it might not have any water in it, it might not be bone dry. So you're just like, oh, I need watering. Clear pots again come in really, really handy because you can kind of see, and this is the thing that most people kind of struggle with in the beginning. I really did as well because nobody really spoke about this because you're just like, well, fine, you tell me to water it like a regular plant, but uh, when do I know to water? Because with a regular plant in soil, you would stick your finger in, use a moisture meter, all of these things, or visually look at it and say it's wet so I'm not watering it. How do I do that with pebbles? Clear pots will really help you. And again, this will come and it's annoying, I know, and it was annoying when I was doing it as well, but there's no better option that I have found so far. Anybody who comes up with something like a moisture meter for Lekka or La Choose Upon or all these things, especially for the people starting off that can actually read the moisture in that and whether it needs watering, will make a fortune. Um, but what you will see, especially with a clear pot, is look at the media. Look at the media. That is a dry media there. And I will show you here a picture of a wet media that the reservoir is empty. There is a difference. When it's wet, it's very, it's a lot darker. It's a few shades darker than it would be on the dry media. So that's generally how you're going to do it. 
I don't want to work in absolutes for this video, but really if, you, if that's going to be something that you're worried about, or maybe you've moved one plant into a, an opaque pot already, and you've moved it and it's stressing you out, invest in a couple of these or get some of those clear disposable cups. Try it there. It will help you better visualize on when you need to water it. But yeah, generally, water it as if it's a regular plant. Flush it. With water, obviously, you need to start considering things like nutrients because there's no nutrients in this media, especially if it doesn't have slow-release fertilizer in it, so you're not using something like the choose upon. And even then, a lot of us will still use fertilizer. It needs to be specialized fertilizer or fertilizer that would work in something like a semi-hydro to water your plants every time, practically, because there is something that people say about LECA, about all of these semi-hydro mixes. I'm pretty sure that it's still kind of bantered around the term inert. There's no, there's no real kind of, there is maybe some minerals you might get from something like the pond, but generally speaking, it won't be as abundant in kind of trace elements that you might get in soil mixes or microfauna or anything like that yet. So it is kind of think of it as a bit of a sterile media. So you need to be introducing some of the elements in as well. And a lot of the time, what you will see as well is that the fertilizer isn't your standard NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. It will also have, if it's a semi-hydro, it will also have trace elements in. So it might have iron, it might have copper, it might have other elements, calcium, all of these things. Because this doesn't have it. The soil mixes generally will have it, or at least some variety of it potentially, because of the materials that's used in it. But this doesn't. You need to kind of add some of that in. So that's something to bear in mind. But yeah, water it like you would do a regular plant in a regular pot. The other big thing that I will say is, and this kind of links into another video that I've done on kind of keeping a plant calendar, and I use an app, and I'll see if I can link it down below because that app, finally, you can get it on both uh, Apple and Android. So it's really, really good. But with something like moving things into semi-hydro, if you can, take a picture and save it somewhere of that plant before it goes into the semi-hydro. And then you can always refer back to it and just kind of go, oh, no, it's doing really well. Or no, it's struggled. It's, it's got a lot less roots now, especially if it's not got any soil media on it. So you can kind of judge it. So that's a quick tip that I would have there. Now, one of the other big things is seasonal change. And I don't think a lot of people talk about this. So, and I'm talking about plants that you've got specifically in water reservoirs. I mean, this would apply even if it hasn't transitioned into a water reservoir yet, but like with the soil mix, you need, need to pull back in terms of the watering when it comes to winter. Increase it in the summer and growing period, but really reduce it in the winter. And I would go a step further based on two winters now where plants have struggled and this winter I'm going to try something entirely different. And this would be my suggestion, I think, to a lot of people to at least try. Remove the reservoirs for the winter. They don't need a reservoir, generally speaking, a lot of the time. So for the majority of plants, I'm not talking about the examples that I was giving before, like ferns or the begonias or rhizomatous begonias, they were probably, they still appreciated the reservoir even in the winter because they like that moisture being there all the time. But yeah, I w I, my suggestion would be remove the reservoir. Go back to watering them again as if they were in regular soil mix. So flushing it and just removing any water. Don't let it sit in a water reservoir that should be fine. There is a caveat to this to say, if all of the, if the plant's roots have grown into the water reservoir and they are very happy and there's loads of them and they're water roots at that point, then yes, obviously continue with a reservoir. If there's no roots in the water reservoir yet, remove it for the winter. Because I have had a lot of plants that have lost nearly 50% of their roots to rot because I didn't remove that early enough. And huh, 
early enough is the big thing there. How long is a piece of string? When do you need to remove the reservoir? It's going to be up to you as to when that tipping point is where you live in terms from going from summertime to autumn-y, wintry time. So there's going to be a point here generally in the UK, I would normally do that mid-September. The reservoir would start to get removed. The plants might not like it too much to begin with, but you might. So the transition will be removing the water reservoir, but still keep the frequency of the watering as much as it was kind of in the summer months, and then slowly start reducing that as well, because you'll see that the plants that, again, the beauty of a clear pot, you'll see that the media isn't drying out every four days like you might have been seeing before. It might be taking seven days bring it down to seven, basically. Do that quite quickly. So that is definitely the point where you need to be pulling back. You need to actively be engaged with this as a media and be pulling back. <laughs> so in conclusion with all of this, and depends on how many people I've put off at this point, but I don't know, I think I wanted to make this video because I would have personally appreciated this a video like this, very honest video, warts and all, about growing in semi-hydro because then at least, would I have still done it? Yes. But I would have known more things going into it rather than just, try it, it's great, look at all of these plants that are happy in it, plants that have generally only been potted in for a couple of months. I can talk after at least two years now of having my plants in this and it wasn't a fast process. But yeah, so the big things is know the different sizes, know what kind of plant you want to put in there, be aware that it might slow down the growth of the plant. The water reservoir isn't a panacea, it won't cure all. Reduction of watering frequency and possibly removal of the reservoir in the winter. But other than that, enjoy it. It's still a good media. I've still got a lot of my plants in this media. I will also be fully transparent and say that I've moved some philodendrons or philodendrons that I got now that have got very, very fine roots or things that I might be importing from something like Equigenera, some of my Equigenera unboxings. Some of them have gone into arrowed soil mixes because two reasons. I want to see them get big fast and also the roots aren't doing so, so great. So that's what I've done with those. But yeah, hopefully this was educational and interesting enough. I am sure there's going to be some people that are going to agree and I'm sure there's going to be some people that disagree. Do let me know down below. If you disagree with what I'm saying, let me know how you do things differently and also how long you've been growing in the kind of environment conditions and the tips that you want to share down below just because yeah, I just want to make sure that if, if this is going to be something that everybody's going to be seeing isn't something that has just been tested for a month, that you've kind of, it's worked for you for a longer period of time. Because there's unfortunately a lot of half information out there when it comes to growing semi hydro and a lot of people sharing information when they're first starting off. Maybe there's a couple of updates further down the line, but not long term, basically. But yeah. Hopefully you've all enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.